morning, Alfred Street Baptist Church. I am so happy that you guys are here this morning joining us for the prelude. My name is Tiffany Diggs. And I just want to share with you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it, why I am so excited that I get to uh, co-host the prelude. Normally I am producing it, but I'm doing double duty uh, for my main man, one of my favorite ministers, Minister Otis Bird Jr. I miss you, Otis. Can't wait till you get back. Me too. But so... Let me tell you the top three reasons why I'm excited this get morning. Into it, get I'm going to get into it. it. So number three, I get to be here at historic, historic Alfred Street Baptist Church on the corner of Duke and South Alfred. And I get to be here with all of these people that are already here. They come sleep, uh, rain, shine. They get here by planes, trains, automobiles to make sure they get a seat in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. Number two reason why I'm so excited I get to be with you guys while you guys are at home, in your car, on the subway, wherever you are, I get to engage with our faithful online viewers. And the number one reason why I am so excited that I get to go ahead and uh, co-host Prelude, I get to do it with my best friend. Hey, good morning, bestie. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Melissa Crothy, affectionately known as Mel. And you know what? I'm going to piggyback off the bestie. I'm going to give you four reasons. Okay. Four Over reasons. Achiever. Four okay. reasons why I'm excited to be here uh, doing the prelude with the bestie. Uh, number one, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Number two, it's the first of the month in a new season. Can we say fresh anointing fresh. anyone? Third reason, I had the great pleasure of being here last weekend. I had to work through the, the kinks of nerves. And I think I, I'm, I'm in a good place now. And the fourth reason, of course, I'm never going to miss an opportunity to do anything with the sidekick, the bestie, the hey. wonderful Tiffany Diggs. I appreciate it. She's my gal to my Oprah, uh, the, <laughs> the Thelma to my Louise. Frickin' frack, frickin' frack. We'll yes. let you guys decide who's Gail, who's Oprah, who's Frick, who's Frack, uh, who's Thelma, and who's Louise. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> In these Alfred streets. All right, so you guys, one of my favorite things to do is to meet people. So I want to meet you. Drop your name, drop your city, even drop who you're watching with if you want to. In the chat right now, we want to shout you out. You know, last week was a very, very busy week. All the things that were going on. Yes. But it was a wonderful week. While you all are dropping your city and your names in the chat, let us know how your week was last week as well. But as we kick off this new week, there's something that's coming up. Kicked off uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh, ended. Uh, Kaya Moves. Kaya Moves. 75 Hard or Soft. So what is that? That is Kaya's new program that they're doing for 75 days. Kicked off yesterday, and I think we're running through June 20th, if I'm not mistaken. 75 days. We're literally talking about getting fit, faithing forward, and talking about transforming your body. We're looking at reading 10 pages a day. You're doing some form of physical activity or exercise, drinking tons and tons of water, depending what? on if you're soft or hard. I'm, I'm going to go with easy. Um, just Let's just say, stay close to a restroom. So, let, let me tell you what happened yesterday morning. So. The, the, the Reverend Dr. Robert Ty Jones called me yesterday uh, morning, and I was like, oh, my God, is he calling? Because, you know, he wants to pray with his sister in Christ. I was so excited. <laughs> so I answered the phone, and I was like, good morning, Reverend Ty. And, uh, yeah, he pretty much was like, do you know what today is? And I was like, no, what? It's time I, to move. He's making sure that I'm about to start exercising. So, you know, I'm, I'm nervous, and it's really stressing me out. Speaking of stress, April is recognized as the National Stress uh, awareness month and so for uh, Kaya moves there's no better time for us to engage in physical activity because uh, exercise in any form is a great stress reliever and a stress reducer um, so okay when I heard about the Kaya moves I, I was gonna do easy too but then after that Ty called me yesterday and then I had to remember that I have to see him almost every day <laughs> too hard because I'm gonna need all the stress stress relief from Ty that I can get please don't tell him I said that but it's true it's true it's well true. the good thing about it is the more exercise you do uh, it is, will help boost your feel-good endorphins so let's get into seeing who else is engaging in right. Kaya moves who do we have online all right so we have Mary from Montgomery Alabama hi Mary welcome to worship oh, we have okay I'm I'm jealous we have somebody her name is 
Dady, Dady, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, but she is from Antigua. Antigua in the house, welcome okay. to worship. Okay, we have Shirley from Fort Worth, Texas, joining us online. We do everything big in Texas, welcome to worship. We have Alicia from uh, Rockford, Illinois, good morning. Good morning, Alicia and Illinois, welcome to worship. Um, and we have also have Daryl, he's from the what? The South Side of Chicago. <laughs> South Side. <laughs> Welcoming you to worship on behalf of our fearless leader, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. Welcome to worship. All right, so in the words of my bestie, one thing she always says about me is I have never met a stranger. Not and one. it's true. And here's somebody who's not a stranger, because I love social time. This is one of my friends. He also works at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. His name, well, well, you tell us your name. I am Reverend Byron Jones. I serve as volunteer engagement and worship coordinator here at the wonderful Alfred Street Baptist Church. Amen, amen. All right, so, um, ma'am. We, we were just talking about stress and talking about how it's a great stress reliever and mood lifter. What are some of the things you do to stay active and to decompress? For me, I love reading a good book. Um, I love working out, taking walks in nature. Yeah. Um, really just clears my mind so I can be alert to whatever and vigilant to whatever is going on and to really decompress from the stresses of the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Are you doing Kaya Moves, that 75-day challenge where we have to work out, drink lots of water, read? I am. I'm going to do a 75 hard. Because, really? You know, I'm a good alpha man. Okay. And we don't do anything. It's easy. a challenge. It's, it's a, a challenge. We got to do it hard. And a good alpha man, that and means I, that's your frat brother, right? That is, Reverend okay. Jones, my frat brother. Amen. I'm Amen. Go, Amen. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Well, we thank you, Byron, for joining us on the prelude this morning. Any any loud shout outs you want to give before you get back to work? Because this is a work day for Byron. Amen. Shout out to my mama Nim, everybody. Hey, Pookie mama Nim, Nim man, man. Pookie Nene. <laughs> Welcome to worship. <laughs> thank you, Byron. All right, I absolutely, positively love uh, chatting with people. And I am going to say, because I am on producer of duty Tyra it's almost time that we're going to show that video so start getting it prepped my friends and I just want to give Tyra a shout out all the graphics all the lower thirds all the videos she works that out in the studio so big shout out to my girl Tyra Tyra thank we you for your ministry you. and yes. we do love you all right so last week was Easter it was a very long day. It was beautiful. We were at the Strathmore we were. Um, in Bethesda. It was um, filled to capacity. I think we were able to fill almost 2,000 people in that space. And it a was little more. just a vibrant, joyful, uh, spirit-filled venue um, being with so many of you guys. So I, I, I loved Easter Sunday. What were, what were your thoughts? You know, I also loved Easter Sunday. I don't think there's anything um, more compelling than to recognize the transformative love of Jesus Christ and to recognize that he died and he rose for you and for me. And I know that there were some people who wanted to get into the venue and I wanna assure you that per the prayer call earlier this week, Pastor Wesley has already instructed his staff to find a venue that can accommodate the whosoever it will. So we look forward to worshiping with you for next Easter Sunday. All right, so um, since I was telling you guys how beautiful and wonderful it was, we are gonna go ahead and show you a recap of Alfred Street Baptist Church um, 2024 Resurrection Sunday celebration. I was down, but now I'm up, yeah. It's all God, this ain't no love, yeah. I used to be stuck in that mud, whoa. Yeah, I was down, but now I'm uh, 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 I was down, but now I'm up, yeah This all God, this ain't no love, yeah I used to be stuck in that mud, yeah Yeah, I was down, but now I'm up, uh, 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 uh. I was down, but now I'm up Like my name Lazarus, no Satan gon' be mad at this I had to ask my dad if it's okay to swing my back if I pitch it, it's out of the park Moving so quick, it's like they stuck in park They see the numbers, but I see the heart 10,000 hours you spent in the dark Putting in good work So I hope that you like that recap um, Like Mel said, next year we are going to do our very best To make sure that we can accommodate more of you So we can all celebrate uh, together in 2025 I'm looking forward to it already I, Listen, I am, listen, I am too, friend I am too 
Um, so let's do some more shout outs to you guys that are watching online. Um, so Stephanie, you can get more information for Kaya Moves on the website or on, on social media. Uh, so please be on the lookout for that. Thank you for asking. We have Chrissy. Chrissy said that she is tuning in from London. Hey, Chrissy. Hi, London. I actually see Hattiesburg, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. To my family in Mississippi, welcome to worship. Okay, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly Jackson. Just wanted to say good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. <laughs> Um, good morning, Wanda. She's in West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm Beach. I, I bet you it's so warm. She might be in the water. From the beach. You might be surfing right now. Welcome to worship. Oh, uh, a surfing and worshiping. I like that. I like surfing worship. All right. Oh, somebody said that we are a dynamic duo. Thank you, Not Stuart. dynamic. Don't do this to us, and we appreciate you. All right. So we are getting ready for worship time. That means it's time for us. We welcome Royal Priesthood led by Theodore Thur the Third as they minister to us in song. And they be singing. Okay, who's singing, preaching singing. today? Who's preaching today? Uh, we got uh, Reverend Zena preaching at the 8 a.m. And we love Reverend Zena. Keep her in your prayers. Keep all of the staff ministers, Pastor Wesley, Dr. Judy, me and my bestie Mel. And we love you at home. And thank you so much thank for tuning for in. Thank you for joining us for the prelude. And welcome to worship. Thank you. Anybody know God is here? Who came to worship this morning? We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. Would you look at your neighbor and just say, I'm good to see you this morning. And we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's a simple song that says, Oh Lord, we worship and adore your holy name. Let's all sing together. Oh Lord, we worship and adore your holy name. Anybody came to worship this morning? Everybody sing. Oh Lord, we worship. Come on, you just lift your hands and worship and adore. Your name. Can we go? Up? Oh. Come on, keep my life clean. Keep my life 
every day. I want to go with him. I've come too far. Can we say that again, everybody? God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all day. Come on. He promised to keep you and me. Never to leave me. He's never, ever, ever come. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way and keep my life clean. Oh, I want to go. Let's stay right there. I want to go with him. Anybody want to go with him? I want to go with him. Song says, I've come too far. And I'll never say. Worship him on this morning. Now put those hands together because we serve a mighty good God. Come on, everybody. Come on.
prison cells in this world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. I serve a risen servant in this world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives.
glory to your name, God. Somebody missed their cue. Mighty good God. Oh, somebody missed their cue. Mighty good God. He's all the world to me, and he is a mighty good God. I didn't need a little teeny God that couldn't do the heavy work. I needed a mighty good God to show up in my life, because I got mighty big stuff going on, and mighty big prayers that I'm praying, and mighty big, big expectations, and I need a mighty big God. Marcus got a place so hard that the headphones fall down on his face. Because <laughs> while, while y'all standing and rocking and shouting, he got to work that thing out over there on that organ, and he got to know that he knows that he knows that he's playing and talking to a mighty big God. Because somebody came today not playing church. Somebody need a mighty the church so I can praise my mighty big God in the midst of my mighty big life and know that he is here and listening and working it out for my good. Good morning, Alpha Street. Get in where you fit in because <laughs> the spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. And everything that you need, every answer you've been waiting for, can be yours if you get in where you fit in. This is not the moment to be shy. Don't hold back your praise. Let your tears release you and lift you up. Because I was glad when they said unto me, there's a place of refuge. So let us go into the house of the Lord. So as soon as my feet struck Zion, I began to clap my hands. I began to lift my voice. I began to open my mouth and I began to raise a praise to the almighty God. Alfred Street virtual family, overflow room, every space, every place, we welcome you. And so we transition so that we can now stand in the gap for someone else. 
Hold that space. And now lift up someone else. And so church, this morning we're praying for Sister Jacqueline Jones as her mother has passed, Sister Katie L. Paul. We're praying for Sister Jacqueline and Misty Sims in the passing of their husband and father, Meryl Sims. Daryl and Vanita Chever are on our list this morning. It's the mother and mother-in-law, Margaret Chever, to transition to be with the Lord. Our sister, Cynthia Watson, we're praying for her in the passing of her uncle, Jerry, John Jerry Burbridge. We're praying for sister Deborah Crawford in the passing of her niece, Kendra Page. And we are lifting up Reverend Otis Bird in the passing of his grandmother, Mrs. Mary Elaine Bird. Who are you praying for, church? Thank you, God, for hearing whispers of prayer. And so we stand waiting, oh God, for answers of love. And Father, as we lift up these that are mourning in this moment, carry them, keep them, dry their tears, and let them know that what they feel is the presence of you because we have invoked your spirit by prayer. God, someone is praying for themselves right now because life is just a little too difficult and challenging and overwhelming and they're having a hard time finding a way to just breathe. So thank you for the prescription that you gave on this morning to help move us in a way to relinquish some of what we're carrying. Someone is praying for a family member. Somebody is praying because there's someone sick someone homeless, someone hungry, someone in need, oh God. And so if we can't meet the need, we pray right now, God, that you make a way for the need to be met. And where we can be your hands and your feet and your voice, God, give us provision and compassion to do so. We thank you for this privilege and opportunity of prayer because we know as a result, you will answer. So God, in this moment, we lift up the preacher. We thank you for the word. We lift up our pastor, and we ask that you continue to keep and cover him. We lift up those that are missing from this circle today and ask, oh God, that you do only what you can do, and that is be a mighty God. It's your servant's prayer. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to now have our morning scripture. Um, let's lift up the morning scripture, and then we will move right into royal priesthood leading us in our morning hymn, amen? Uh, familiar passage of scripture. We've already tried it. We found it to be true, amen? Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. I hear you. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy and blessing. And his truth endureth to all generations. That is the mighty God that we serve. Let us sing together the royal priesthood he lives. song says, you ask me how, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Let's lift up this hymn together. The first verse, I serve 
I serve the reason say is in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. At just the time I need him, he's always there. Everybody says he lives. Christ Jesus lives. He walks with me and talks with me. Salvation to me. You ask me how. He lives within my heart. Second stanza says, In all the world, I see his loving care. And though my heart, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. Everybody sing this. He lives. Christ Jesus lives. He walks with me and talks with me. You ask me how He lives within my heart Let's go to that last answer Rejoice, rejoice Lift up your voice Eternal hallelujah To Jesus Christ our King the hope of all, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good, and kind. Everybody sings, he lives. Christ Jesus lives. For he walks with me and talks with me. He lives. Salvation. You ask me how. He lives. Church, we're going to take that as a testimony and a cue for us to now pass the peace to one another. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the
We hope that you received your communion as you came in. If not, just lift your hands and a deacon will serve you to make sure that you have it. We have a few hands in the back. We have a few hands at the top. couple hands at the top. Hang on, they're on the way. That's right. In the meantime, you can shake, shake, shake. <laughs> Start trying to get those little films open. Amen. I believe everyone has been served. There's some song lyrics that come to mind I shared this morning. I, I looked them up this time because I got brain fog. So y'all pray for a sister. But they help us remember and reflect in this moment. You gave that I might live. You gave that I might be set free. You exchanged your life for mine. What a marvelous thing you've done. And we say that it's marvelous, but that marvelous work was not without sacrifice and cost. And to some, it may seem free, but it cost our Savior his life. But a life he was willing to lay down so that we could experience eternal life and freedom and relationship with him. And for that, I am grateful. We're reminded that as often as we do this, as often as we drink eat the bread and drink the cup that we hold space to remember our Christ, that sacrifice and his return. So together, family, let us take the bread in remembrance of his body, broken, bruised for our iniquities and let us share together. And likewise with the cup, symbolic of his blood, that blood that never loses its power, but shed nonetheless, let us drink together. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you, God, for ending the scatteredness of our lives and connecting us with family and community and congregation that we can come to the table and share. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. So now we would like to take a moment and acknowledge our guest. Do we have any first time visitors with us today? Just lift your hands. Amen. 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 Welcome to Alfred Street and welcome to the sanctuary. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We're glad that you are here and that you chose to worship with us on today. Any anniversaries today, any couples celebrating any anniversary today, ask that you stand. Oh, they popped up. Amen. There's two. Three. Four. All right. Starting at the top, all the way at the top. Good morning. Yes, you. Good morning. Could you share with us how many years you're celebrating? 19 years. All right. Will you share with us? 16. Amen. Amen. Here. 30. Amen. Last but certainly not least, 33. Woo! All right. So we've got the teenagers and the 30s uh, in the house today. They'll both be in the lobby for advice. Amen. Congratulations on your anniversary. May God bless you with many, many more. And last but not least, are there any birthdays in the house this morning? Yay! <laughs> All right, another year. Thank God. Thank God for another year. May this year be the best one yet. And let us know when you get what you wished for, all right? It's, it's because you were here today. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your birthday season. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, the, this first one, though, is the most important of them all. Pastor Wesley says, good morning, Alfred Street. And he sends his love to each and every one of you. He will be back soon. Amen. Um, we will, would like to let you know about the junior youth. Uh, so they have uh, Fellowship Fridays happening for junior youth. They're, they are held every second Friday of the month. And so the next outing is scheduled for this coming Friday, April the 10th, from 7 to 9. So they want you to go to the website so that you can get the details and register there, Okay. And then, as a church family, we will get ready to do baptism, right hand of fellowship, and communion together in the sanctuary next Saturday, April the 13th. So we ask that you come, tune in, and let us welcome the newest members of Alfred Street. Amen? Alfred Street, there are a number of ways that you can give, because as you can see, we don't take a traditional offering. We're not passing a plate. Amen? Uh, our our pastor teaches us that mature Christians know what they should do. Amen? And there are many ways that you can do that. You can go to the website and hit give, or you can use one of the options that are on the screen. But we ask that you do your part. Give back to God what you believe. That's your relationship between you and God, what you believe God has shared with you to sow into this good work. Amen? Amen. So let us pray, and then we will be blessed with the selection. God, thank you in this moment for provision. That right there is enough. Thank you, God, for providing and ensuring that we are taken care of, because that's what a good father does. And so help us, oh God, as we mature in this space of giving back to you, that you will bless it, that it will be used accordingly for the needs and the upbuilding of the kingdom. We thank you, we praise you, and honor you. And we even pray, God, for those that might still be struggling or not even have anything to give. So allow their service, oh God, unto you. Let it be blessed and let it be prosperous so that no one feels left out. We're all in this thing together and we will do what you have called us to do with that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Prepare yourselves for an amazing selection and the word of God.
clap. Ah, wipe your eyes. Oh God, the wounds have turned to scars. Don't cry. Wipe your eyes. The master of the universe stands before you. That's worth a moment of shouting. That's worth a moment of thanksgiving. That weeping is over. That crying is over. It's promised to dry every tear from our eyes. For he is not dead. He is risen. He is not dead. All power is in his hands. He is not dead. It's worthy of our worship. It's worthy of our praise. It's worthy of our hallelujah. He is not dead. Dead, dry your eyes. Jehovah is still alive. Oh God, we thank you for you got up with all power in your hand. We thank you for you did not let death, hell, or the grave defeat you. We thank you for your victory was only the first fruit. Your victory makes way for our victory. So God, we might know that we are alive in you. Oh God, in this moment, come and tabernacle with your people. In this moment, do the improbable, which is to use these sinful lips to speak your gospel truth. God, in this moment, look past my form and fill it with your spirit that your people might hear your voice. God, I give you full permission to have your perfect way in this, your daughter. And these, your waiting people, we will not cry. <laughs> we will wipe our eyes, for you are alive and you live in us. Come now, gracious God, we pray in your son's name. Amen. And all God's children said amen and invited God into your space that God might do what God will do with these mere words. Oh God, to my pastor, to my beloved brother, I count it an honor to stand where God has positioned him. To my sister, Dr. Judy, in her absence, but Alfred Street, do you know how blessed you are? How many men and women of God you have? my sister Tasha, and, and would you all stand to your feet and join me in thanking God for the new Reverend Dr. Marcia Norfleet. Would you just do that this morning? The new Reverend Dr. Re Say that out loud, Reverend Dr. Marcia Norfleet. Watch out, Alfred Street. And beloved, just one more prayer request. Thank you, Dr. Latasha, for going to Atlanta yesterday to join our pastor in the celebration of the life of Minister Bird's grandmother. It's just good when you know your family's got your back. I'm so glad you were able to travel. We pray for Minister Bird. Now, God, is there a word? Now, God, is there a word? From the Gospel of John, on that first Sunday evening, in the in the 20th chapter, beginning in the 19th verse, I want you to hear these words. When it was evening on that day, evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus. 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If there was a title for this meditation, it would be just breathe. Just breathe. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, when we open the curtain on this scene, on this morning's text, we find that the disciples are scared. They are locked behind doors for protection. They are huddled in the upper room because they do not believe they are safe. They are desperate and dejected and still demoralized because they believe their Savior is yet dead. Yes, 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 I know, Mary Magdalene, because in the Gospel of John, it's only Mary of Magdalia who sees him. I know, Mary Magdalene has run and told them that she has seen the Lord, but it is quite likely they believe that her demons have returned, and it was only in her grief that she imagined she saw the Master. Besides, it's been hours. It's evening, surely. Surely, if he were still alive, he would have come to see about us. He said the third day, and the third day has come and gone. He must be dead. They're afraid. They're afraid, and they have good reason to be afraid. The same folk who set up Jesus to be executed, the same ones who schemed and plotted, who lied and lifted up a bag of silver coins underneath Judas's nose, the same ones who trafficked in kangaroo courts and set up systems that call for Barabbas, the same ones who cried Hosanna two weeks ago and jeered while he was on a cross on a Friday, those same folks now feel empowered because they believe Jesus is dead. Those same folks now feel emboldened because they got the ringleader. Those same folks now feel energized to gather up and get rid of the rest. The disciples are afraid and they have good reason because those folk want to do the same thing to them that they did to Jesus. They're afraid. They're hiding. They're scared. But before we're too hard on the disciples. Before we look into that upper room and see them as raw and reluctant and reprehensible, let me invite you to think about the way they really might resemble us. For the disciples are not the only ones behind doors, locked because of fear. You see, some of us go to work every day and are behind doors locked because of fear. We're locked behind doors of fear because we've watched them fire colleagues without any notice and we wonder if we're next. We're locked behind doors of fear playing small, trying not to draw attention to ourselves because we don't know what that attention will yield. We're locked behind do doors of fear remaining quiet even when our silence makes us complicit in what we know is not ethical or godly. We're locked behind doors of fear watching others malign instead of standing with them because we just know we need that paycheck and I'd rather be locked behind that door than be godly. It's easy to be disdainful of the disciples as we see them cowering in that upper room. It's easy to think about them as fearful and faithless and feckless and foolish, but are they familiar? You see, some of us are locked behind doors of relationships because like the disciples, we are afraid. Things look good when we dress up and come to church on Sunday, but someone right here, right now, is worried about how the conversation is going to go down in the car on the way home. That relationship is strained. The children are caught in the middle. There's no vision for your future. Judgment seems more prevalent than love. And for fear of reputation, fear of embarrassment, embarrassment, fear of failure, fear of fear, we stay locked behind doors in relationships that do not bless us. 
And if I haven't come down your street yet, hold on. Some of us are locked behind doors of health. You know that space on your arm doesn't look right. You know that pain in your belly has been there too long. Those headaches that won't go away. That double vision that plagues you. That inability to walk up even a short flight of stairs. You know you've got something going on in your body, but you're locked behind a door of fear because you've not been to the doctor in so long. You can't remember the address or the doctor's name. You've not been in so long. You don't know if when you go what you'll find out you can handle and so you would rather be fearful hoping and praying that somebody's holy oil or somebody's prayer or your DNA will take care of what ails you locked behind doors of fear and ignorance because like the disciples we are afraid and there just may be somebody this morning who's locked behind the door of imposter syndrome you don't believe you deserve to be where you are. You do not believe you've been blessed and elevated by God. You don't believe you own or deserve the position you occupy. You don't believe that the God of creation could look at you and fill you and equip you and prepare you for that place. And you have forgotten what John 15, 16 says. Now, what they're going to put up there is the real verse, John 15, 16. But here's the Zena Jacques translation. Baby girl and brother man, let me help you. You did not begin this whole thing. You were not the one who did the choosing. I chose you because I saw who you were. I put my gifts in you. I put my spirit in you. I set you in that place. I deposited in you what you need. I set you apart to do work for me. I'm calling forth your gifts and they will be fruit so sweet. You will bless. You will bless and it will remain whatever you ask in my name. Some of us are locked behind doors of fear because we don't believe the very word of God. That you are chosen, that you are beloved, that you are God's best version of you. Be careful when you get ready to judge the disciples that evening in that room frightened. Be careful when you get ready to say, don't they know? Because beloved, sometimes we act as if we don't know. Yes, the disciples resemble us. Yes, the disciples are familiar to us because we all understand what it is to be locked behind doors of fear. And not unlike the disciples, when fear kicks in, we are no longer in the position to make our best decisions. Like the disciples, when fear presents itself, we move into a defensive posture using all of our energy to retreat and to protect instead of regroup and protect. Progress. I wish I just had a little time to teach this morning because the physiology and the neurobiology of fear do many things to our bodies. When we become fearful, our blood shifts from our brain to our extremities, preparing us to run. When we are fearful, the higher order thinking skills, our frontal cortex shuts down. That's where the higher order thinking skills are. It stops working so that the amygdala can kick in and we can move to fear or flight, when we are frightened, we become foolish. <laughs> foolish. When we become frightened, we no longer have perspective. When we become frightened, we no longer know where to go. When we become frightened, we stop thinking. The disciples, you and I, in a place of fear, don't know how to think. Fear is not our enemy. Do not get me wrong. I think fear is a wonderful stop sign because when fear rises up in our body, it means something is wrong and it means we need to stop and look around us, but it does not mean we stop thinking. It means we stop and stick ourselves in the boom and the bosom of God and ask God to order our thoughts so that the fear does not overtake us. For the word of God says over and over and over, fear not, I am with you. Do not not be afraid, be of good courage. So fear has to be overcome. And I just believe this morning's text offer us, offers us ways to overcome our fear. 
Thanks be to God, this text has much to teach us because in the middle of their fear, without fanfare, without warning, Jesus shows up and he says, peace be with you. That peace is a Greek word, arene. And this peace is not the word that describes a sense of tranquility. It's not the way Miriam Webster describes it as a freedom from disturbance. It's not peace just for facility, civility's sake. This peace, this arene, is derived from the Hebrew word shalom. This peace, shalom, and arene means completeness, means safety, means soundness, means wealth, means health, means prosperity. Do you not see it? is so much more than the absence of disturbance. It's so much more than tranquility. God's peace is a keeping peace. God's peace is a sufficient peace. God's peace passes all understanding. God's peace will keep you in the midst of the storm. God's peace will keep you when your enemies come after you. God's peace will let you place your head on your pillow when all hell is breaking loose, for you have a savior who defeated hell, death, and the grave. God's peace. It's a security in the face of your fear. It's feeling safe in the core of your very being. It's a contentment. The best way I know to describe a Rene and Shalom is enoughness. God's peace is enoughness. It's enough for any circumstance. It's enough for any enemy. It's enough for any mistake. It's enough for any sin. It's enough for any debacle. It's enough. God's peace. God's peace when all the pieces fit together. God's peace when it dissipates doubt. God's peace when it's not temporal or fleeting. God's peace when it's inextricably present when you just call on it. God's peace. And I love that Jesus showed up out of thin air. God's peace can show up out of thin air. And not just peace. How do you overcome fear? Not just peace. That's first. But you overcome fear with peace that is personal. Did you hear Jesus? He didn't just say peace. He said, peace be to you. I just imagine he looked in everybody's eyes. I just imagine he may have called some folk by name. I just imagine he might have touched one or two on the shoulder. I just imagine he walked close to them and said, peace be to you. Peace be to you because I know you. I don't need to see you in the crowd. I know you. Peace be to you because whether you say it out loud or not, I know the hell you're going through. Peace be to you because I have who you need. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I'm Jehovah Rapha, your healer. I'm Jehovah Rofi, your king. I'm Jehovah Shema, your presence. I'm Jehovah Shalom, your peace. I am what you need. Peace be to you in an individual way, in a specific way. Peace that's stills your mind, peace that ceases your worry, peace that is always with you. The first way Jesus wants them to combat fear is peace, but peace that is specific. And the second thing Jesus does in this text, the second way he wants us to understand how we overcome fear is he shows them his wounds. He shows that now... Some of you will remember, this is years ago, that I preached a sermon here about wounds becoming scars because I hated that God sent Jesus back with wounds. Could not the God of all creation send Jesus back without any wounds? Could not the God of all creation clean that up? I would prefer a Jesus without scars. But I learned, and I learned the hard way that the Reason I believe now that he shows up with these wounds is so when I see his wounds, I, and I know his wounds weren't fatal, I know my wounds aren't fatal. I can overcome fear because when you wound me, I'm going to heal and it's going to be a scar. And scars only form on living tissue. He comes back wounded where metal met flesh. He shows them and he says to them, these wounds did not take me out and yours won't either. How do you overcome fear? You don't worry about the wounds because the God who is our healer will turn them from wounds to scars and then they will be your testimony to a world about a Jesus who can save, about a Jesus who can heal, about a Jesus who can take what looked deadly and bring out of eternal life. 
How do we overcome fear? It's individual and personal peace. How do we overcome fear? Let them wound me because the God I love and serve will heal my wounds and show the world his power through my scars. And then, and then he gives them an assignment. He says, peace be to you. He shows them his wounds. He says, peace again. And then he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. How do we overcome fear? Do you know how much God trusts you? Do you know that God has faith in you? When you read Lamentations 3 and it says, great is thy faithfulness, that's God's faithfulness in you. God looks at you and sees who you are. God knows your gifts and your talents. It doesn't matter that we're not perfect. It doesn't matter that they were up in that room frightened. It doesn't matter that, they, it, that Peter was there who had yet denied him. It doesn't matter because God knows who where we are. And when we come to him with the fullness of our hearts, when we come to him confessing and repenting, when we come to him, he says, ah, now I can use you because I've got faith in you. I know who you are, disciples. Here's my my assignment. God has an assignment on your life and part of the way that helps you overcome your fear. Do you remember being in, th I have never been athletic. <laughs> never. I re I've always been tall, but I remember being chunky. I was really smart and had a mouth, but I was chunky. But I remember being on the playground and somebody choosing me. I am 67 years old and I can still remember that feeling of being chosen and being proud and wanting to do my best. God said on the day you were born, this one's mine. This one is the one I'm choosing. On the day you were conceived, God placed in you an assignment and a plan. And the only one who can abort it you. How do we overcome fear that you know the master of the universe said, ah, that's one of my best ones. Ah, that's the one I've assigned. That's the one I trust. That's the one I send. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then, and then, ah, uh, and then he breathed on them. <laughs> Beloved, that word breathe Emphaseo means to blow or to breathe upon. But here's what, here's why, as pastor would say, here's why you come to Alfred Street. Because your pastors are studying. That word, emphaseo, in the Greek is only used three times in the whole of the Bible. God, through the Son, Jesus, in that moment, breathed on them. And the, the technical term is hapax legomenon. And it means that it's the only use of a term. This emphaseo is used once in all of the Greek New Testament. And it's here in John 20. There are many words for breathe. But in this moment, God breathed on them through Jesus. And here's what's special about that. That word is used two other times in the Bible. In the third century, there was, a, can I teach just a minute? In the third century, there was a translation from the Hebrew into the Greek because so many of the Jewish diaspora had moved to Egypt and moved out into the world. And so they were no longer in Hebrew, Aramaic speaking areas. They were in Greek speaking areas and they needed a Bible that Greek speakers could use. So it was translated into the Septuagint. So all of a sudden you have the Greek New Testament and you have now a Greek Hebrew Bible, a Greek Old Testament. And that word emphasis 
emphaseo used only once in the New Testament in John 20 is used twice in the Old Testament. It's used in Genesis 2-7 when God breathed into the first Adam, when God gave life to temporary organized dust, when God said you are going to live and have your being. It's used in Genesis 2 for God giving an animated spirit to something that was just dust. And it's used a second time. It's used in Ezekiel 37, 9. You read that text this morning when there was a valley of dry bones who could do nothing. And in for sale, in for sale, in for sale, they breathed into the dry bones and they rose up on their feet and became a vast army. Three times in all of the Bible, animating spirit, three times when that which was dead, when that which had no life, when that which at, was at an end needed to find a way to rise up. In John 20, when Jesus shows up, he breathes in for sale. He knew that their spirits were dead. He knew that their hopes were dead. He knew that their dreams were dead. He knew that they had no energy. He knew they had gone back to dust. And Jesus showed up and breathed on them. How do you overcome fear, beloved? You overcome fear because God's peace is available and in us. You overcome fear, beloved. Because those wounds, will, those wounds will become scars. You overcome fear because he loves you enough to assign you. You overcome fear because he breathes on you. And please don't miss what he said next. He breathed on them that animating spirit, but then he said, receive uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, receive the comforter. Receive the one who will bring everything to your remembrance. Receive the one who will keep you in perfect peace. Receive the paraclete and the helper. Receive the one who seals your salvation. Receive the one that will hold you accountable. Receive the one that prays in you when your groans will not reach out for words. Receive the one that is ever with you, the triune God that lives and walks with us every single day. How do you overcome fear? Because you've got a forward guard. It's the Holy Spirit. You've got a rear guard. It's the Holy Spirit. You've got a covering. It's the Holy Spirit. The disciples in that moment who started that evening so fearful, now had a recipe to release their fear. Now had a way to see how to go out into the world. Now had a way to rejoice. And you know what they did next? Nothing. Go back and read John 20. Jesus breathes on them. He gives them another assignment. And the next verse. 26 is, and one week later, wait now, hold on, let me get this right, it's the evening of Easter Sunday, they are scared beyond their wits, Jesus shows up and gives them a recipe for overcoming fear, they rejoice and then they do nothing for a week. Because the text says, next week, Thomas was there. But there's nothing between Jesus' breathing and next week. Why? Because sometimes, beloved, when you've been through trauma, sometimes, beloved, when your heart's been broken, sometimes, beloved, when things get tough, sometimes when you know you've messed up, sometimes when you look around and you don't know what to do and your fear takes over, sometimes even when joy has returned, sometimes even when a new way has been made clear, sometimes the trauma is so deep, the lament so deep and tough, you need to sit and just Breathe. Don't do anything. Be still and know 
that I am God. Be still and let your body heal. Be still and let your soul come back to stasis. Be still and let God minister to you. Be still and receive my love. Be still and receive my grace. Be still and receive my mercy. Be still and let me whisper into your ear. Be still and let me build you back up. Be still and let me fortify you. Be still and let me assure you of my presence. Be and just breathe. Because when you and I breathe in the natural, we distribute oxygen through our body and get movement in our blood and strength to our extremities. When we breathe in our bodies, we prepare our bodies for strength. And when we breathe in the Holy Spirit, we distribute in our bodies the gifts of love and joy and peace and patience and faithfulness and gentleness. When we breathe in, we receive the gifts of the Spirit so that we know what it is we are supposed to do. When we breathe in, we find our center in God. I'm so grateful that the disciples did not rush out for their trauma was real. And that momentary sign of Jesus was significant but not enough. And when Jesus blesses you and me, it's good, but it's not always enough. We have to sit in that thing until it takes root in our bodies and it becomes not an experience, but our truth. Just breathe. The God of all creation has chosen you has an assignment for you. The God of all creation is ready for you to go out when the time is ready. Don't go prematurely, beloved. Don't go until you and God have agreed that you've breathed enough. Don't go until your chest is full of the Spirit. Don't go until you got enough breath to breathe into somebody else. Don't go until you're ready. Don't go until you're armored. Don't go until you're fortified. Don't go until you've just breathed. Into the first Adam, our God, you breathe the breath of life into that valley of dry bones. You animated them. Into the disciples, you emphasized And then you had them wait. God, your sons and daughters are living in a culture that is full of fear. Fear of the next election. Fear of the violence on our streets. Fear of those imposter syndromes and relationships and work and health circumstances. Fear, God, of not hearing your voice. We live in a space where we fear. Help us, just as you did the disciples, to receive your peace. Help us to know that our wounds are not fatal, for you are a God who heals. Help us receive the Spirit to breathe in your presence and wait until we are ready. And then God, send us into the world, sign and symbol of your love and your breath, that we might breathe, you might breathe through us, that the world might know your power. Help us, God, not go out shouting, not go out running. Right now, God, have your sons and daughters take a deep breath. Teach 
teach us, God, how to breathe you in. Amen. Beloved, in this place, many of us have come to a saving knowledge of the one who breathes into us, and we are grateful. But there may be somebody today who's been holding their breath far too long. You don't know how to take a deep breath for fear of choking. I want to invite you. I want, you to, I want to invite you to come into the arms of that same Savior who met the disciples on that fearful Sunday evening, who breathed into them and stands ready to breathe into you. As royal priesthood prepares to minister to us, is there one? Come. We offer him, the one who will breathe into you. Is there one? He waits, longing for a relationship with you. Come from behind those locked doors, burst them open, and join him. His arms are open wide, just for you. Is there one? Come on. Our deacons will join you up here. There's no danger in this space. He loves you. Is there one? as we prepare to leave. If this week you find yourself like the disciples frightened, just breathe. Breathe in a God who loves you and sent his son, for he is ever present, breath in your body. May you go into this week filled with joy, for the God of all creation has breathed on you and loves you with the love of Christ. May you be blessed as royal priesthood blesses us. Now unto him who is able to keep me from falling, from falling unto to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us with excellence before the Father's throne in glory. To the one who breathes in us, to the one who touches us and wishes us, grants us peace, be all glory and dominion, majesty and power, 
now until eternity. Amen and amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Greetings as we shower in the month of April. Welcome to Alfred Street Worship Experience. We welcome you every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. in person and live stream online via our website and social media platforms. Now, here are the upcoming announcements. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. Everyone, please be sure to scan the QR code with your phone, which will take you directly to our giving page on our website. If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. Our daily prayer call was a huge success during Seek 2024, thanks in part to all of you. As a result, we'll resume our daily prayer call starting on Monday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. However, we will continue to utilize the Zoom platform that we've used during Seek 2024. Please visit our website, social media platforms, and or eBlast for additional information. Calling all members, family, and friends, it's time to get back to Sunday school, beginning in the month of April. Join our Sunday school community in the theme, What's Your Image of the Church? Exploring the early church as we continue to find meaning in the church today, every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. There are classes for every member of the family. We are here for you in person or online virtually for deep roots bearing fruits. Email sundayschool at alfredstreet.org. Alfred Street, let's take a journey to the cross. Join the evangelism ministry for an encounter on Saturday, April 13th, a virtual online experience from 9.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. This evangelism encounter is a learning event designed for individuals to learn more about everyday evangelism and how important it is to the family of God's growth and effectiveness. This 90-minute session is open to all who want to explore and sharpen their witnessing skills. No prior knowledge is required to join this event. Register your attendance online today. Email evangelism at alfredstreet.org with any questions. Attention all high school seniors of Alfred Street Baptist Church. It's that time of year. The 2024 ASBC High School Senior Scholarship applications are now being accepted online. Calling all parents and guardians of high school seniors to visit our website. Complete the application today. More detailed information can be found on our website. So don't wait. Please complete your application today. Speaking of grief, Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling, in conjunction with our Grief Share Ministry, presents their 2024 Spring Sessions, starting on March 14th through June 13th, and every Thursday night, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. This will be a virtual online experience. You must register online to receive the webinar information. Remember, Grief is a natural, complex, and emotional response to loss. The Grief Share sessions are a great support system. Email griefshare at alfredstreet.org for details. Hey everybody, I'm Minister Otis Bird Jr. and it's my honor to serve as the assistant to the pastor for online ministry and engagement here at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. And guess what? I have some exciting news to share with you. 
I'm glad you asked. It's our new live pre-worship broadcast, The Prelude. I got you. Every Sunday morning, we will go live reporting from inside the walls of ASBC to inform you of what's going on in these Alfred streets, to intentionally engage with our faithful online viewers, and just to have some fun together before worship service begins. It will begin airing on Sunday, February 4th. Online viewers, get ready to interact with us live in the chat. Get ready to share with us your name, your city, and any other comments you'd like to share with us. We are excited about this endeavor and we hope to see you there. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey Alfred Street, Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right, purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens. Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun tutorial ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village study guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text? If so, all visitors, text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number, 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward Weekly Radio Broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. We want to thank you for tuning into Alpha Street's live worship experience. Again, this is Charnel King, Social Media Manager. For more information on what's happening here at Alpha Street, make sure to check out our website and social media platforms. We hope you have a blessed week.